This is rough. Yep. I think just about everybody knows what happened yesterday in New York City. And if you don't, there are two things that have been happening. And I would like to also afterwards maybe address the protests that have been happening at Columbia University. But on top of that, there's a trial happening, of course, in Manhattan and for Donald Trump, a civil trial, I believe. I'm not even sure which one it is. There's a bunch of them that he's going to have. But this man self-immolated in front of the courthouse yesterday. And yeah. we saw it. We saw it. on, And it's on Twitter right now. You can go watch it. I don't. I'm not going to play it. It's it's horrific. I know these guys did on INN News, and I give them all the credit in the world for it. I just watched it again. I watched it earlier in its basic entirety, and it's just it's horrific. Um, yep. So Colin Rugg, and I, I'm not really familiar with him, but I believe he's more on the right than on the left. He's got a big following, a billion followers, you can see on Twitter. Co-owner of Trending Politics. He's not a lefty for sure. Right, but he says that the the man who lit himself on fire outside of Trump's trial in New York City has been identified as Max Azarello. And he publishes he takes some of what was published in what some people are referring to as a quote unquote manifesto. I don't like that word at all. <clears throat> but he wrote a substack post of all things, was his final message. Um we're going to read his post, and I'm going to play his 17-second video here. This was his final message. Start a fucking revolution. Start a fucking revolution. Start a fucking revolution. You've got nothing to lose. All right, and he apparently tweeted this out or put this out on his Instagram stories. And this is <clears throat> what he had thrown out about. This is the pamphlet that he had apparently thrown out right before he did it. Um, so what the hell's going on here? Um, yeah. What is going on? I, I don't know. This is horrible. At least he didn't harm anyone else physically to begin with. That's correct. Um, Trump is here. Trump is with Biden and they're about to fascist coup us is a sign. I don't know if he had that sign or somebody else held that sign. But that's the scene. That's from a scene just right in front of it. <clears throat> um, her friend, just a thought, Aaron. Everyone keeps saying this man is mentally ill, but he's 100% right, and we are all sadly going to learn the hard way. What is she talking about? Well, he apparently had a substack called the Ponzi Papers. Coming to a substack newsletter near you. Now, before we read his article, I want you to look at his bio which is written under the pseudonym M. Crosby, which may be his middle name or his favorite hockey player's last name, for all we know. Yep. He says that he did 1,500 hours of research since Peter Thiel started a bank run in March, and now he knows the secrets of the world. Cheers to America's first military coup and its second revolution. All right, and he's got this um, substack that he's been writing for about a year called the Ponzi Papers. All right, and we're going to read this article that he published Friday. By the way, you cannot like this article. I've tried. It will not allow you to like this article. It just refreshes. Yes, he okay. he, uh, he succumbed to his wounds. He, wounds. he died. He says, my name is Max Azzarello, and I am an investigative researcher who has set himself on fire outside the Trump, Trump trial in Manhattan. This extreme act of protest is to draw attention to an urgent and important discovery. 
We are victims of a totalitarian con, and our own government, along with many of their allies, is about to hit us with an apocalyptic fascist world coup. These claims sound like fanatical conspiracy theory, but they are not. They are proof of conspiracy. They're conspiracy fact. If you investigate this mountain of research, you will prove them too. If you learn a great deal about Ponzi schemes, you will discover that our life is a lie. If you follow this story and the links below, you'll discover the rotten truth of post-truth America. Truthiness. You will learn the scariest and stupidest story in world history, and you'll realize that we are all in a desperate state of emergency that requires your action. To my friends and family, witnesses and first responders, I deeply apologize for inflicting this pain upon you, but I assure you it's a drop in the bucket compared to what our government intends to inflict. Because these words are true, this is an act of revolution, as you heard him sing. This is where he starts to tell his story. Last March, a billionaire named Peter Thiel started a bank run on Silicon Valley Bank. I knew enough about Thiel that I found this incredibly suspicious. My hunch was that this was intentional, though I couldn't fathom why. I began investigating online and quickly found cryptocurrencies fingerprints all over it. I think we've learned that SBF and... Um, FTX, his crypto outlet. Arc was, FTX, that's right. It. He said the bank run occurred just days after Silvergate Bank, which catered almost exclusively to crypto companies, collapsed. Meanwhile, meanwhile, several crypto cheerleaders were all over financial media warning of a regional banking collapse, and nobody in media was addressing the clear crypto connections. I dug deep into the financials of Teal's venture capital firm, Founders Fund, and eventually uncovered the following until, oh, which is all proven many times over. I don't, I don't know if I agree that it's all been proven many times over, but I know that Golden Monarch in the chat would certainly agree with this part. Cryptocurrency is our first multi-planetary, multi-trillion dollar Ponzi scheme. It was expressly created for this purpose by a laundry list of rich and powerful people out of Stanford, Silicon Valley, and Harvard, and Facebook. Okay. Uh, not very odd that it's lagging right now, Cookies. It's been lagging all, all show, honestly, back and forth. Hi, Cynic. Now I'm glad to see you here tonight, too. The March 2023 bank failures were all intentional. The banks were used to move out stolen Ponzi money. This signals that they're no longer dumping cash into the cryptocurrency Ponzi afloat to keep it afloat, and it will soon go insolvent as all Ponzi's must and do. When the Ponzi scheme goes insolvent, it will take down half the stock market with it. The perpetrators use their major companies to pipe into the blockchain so they could funnel money out from the crypto exchanges. And this includes Google, mm. Tesla, Apple, PayPal, Facebook, Disney, Walmart, Target, InBev, Zoom, and countless others. Now you've also got the major banks involved also because of this crypto derivative stuff that they're now starting to do, um, ETF crypto. It's a Ponzi scheme so large yeah. that it created global inflation, which is why the price of Bitcoin has been a remarkable leading indicator for inflation rates. Victims who bought crypto don't realize their money has already been stolen, so the money gets double counted by the victims and the criminals who stole it. Here's where it really gets interesting. As it turns out, our elites are wash in Ponzi schemes, Stanford's Stardex.com investment fund, and a certain guy who didn't hang himself, his program for evolutionary dynamics, he ran at Harvard, are both fake science Ponzi factories that these schools have invested billions in. They're filled with fraudulent companies really? that use smoke and mirrors to promise miraculous new technology, but always collapse while the perpetrators only get richer. Go figure. 
funneling trillions of dollars in stolen cash through the stock market, created through the largest stock market anomaly in history. The stock market chart signature of a Ponzi scheme is a massive increase while they stack up cash. When a massive fall, and then a massive fall as they funnel out of the stolen cash. This chart shape appeared in all the companies listed above. In order to explain the massive anomaly, our criminal government unleashed COVID on the world and told us those were the stay-at-home stocks, unquote. Allegedly, allegedly, safe and effective. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> if not, we're over on Rumble and Rockfin. Mm -hmm. Ponzi schemes are vicious beasts, and cryptocurrency is history's largest Ponzi by orders of magnitude. It could be described best as an economic doomsday device intentionally made to shatter the world economy. For a couple of reasons, I'm going to stop there for a second, because number one, they can cut off power to an area, and all of a sudden, within a day or two, you have no access to your crypto. Because without a crypto wallet, mm -hmm. without power, you got nothing. All right? On top of the fact that they can restrict access to or trade with certain wallets or certain exchanges or certain cryptocurrencies, complete, on top of the fact that What's behind it, other than the money that you had originally put into it, which has already been siphoned out, according to this? The U.S. Mm -hmm. government is fully involved in this totalitarian con. To illustrate its bipartisan support, I'll note that every participant, nearly every participant of the Clinton Global Initiative, has ties to cryptocurrency, hmm, while two of the biggest tech VCs who participated are Trump associates, Josh Kushner, and the mooch, Anthony Scaramucci. To better mm. understand our form of government, I will point you to one of the most astonishing pieces of standalone evidence I've found. Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton's 1988 DNC speech when he nominated Mike Dukakis for president against George H.W. Bush. The speech is a vile, mean-spirited roast of Dukakis that makes no sense whatsoever. For Clinton to ruthlessly attack a member of his own party should have been political suicide. And he repeatedly mocks Dukakis' noble and earnest qualities. And I think as he mocked his eyebrows, too, if I remember correctly. But hmm. notably, actor Rob Lowe, of all people, who was supporting Dukakis, was a victim of a teen sex blackmail operation at the DNC that year. I remember, like, a Rob Lowe... Con uh, Scandal, but I didn't know that it was at the DNC. Since we all know that Clinton sure. is a close associate with teen sex blackmail artist, guy who hung himself with a paper t-shirt, we can suddenly this is make... when Rob Lowe like, was dating the, the person you didn't know was a prostitute, right? And then that was, like, the DNC found that, and... Oh, wait, no, that was the West Wing. Sorry. <laughs> that's the show right Where, again predictive programming yeah. or actually they're letting the story out afterwards okay afterwards since we know that clinton is a close associate with with guy who hung himself with a paper t-shirt who didn't really hang himself we can make suddenly perfect sense of the nonsensical speech by applying this lens think about it as bill clinton is a cocky mob boss who blackmailed Mike Dukakis because Dukakis thought his job was to help the public. He teases out future public revelation that Kitty Dukakis drank rubbing alcohol and offers a strange anecdote about the crack <laughs> epidemic that reveals he's an exceedingly proud drug runner. What does yeah, this okay. revelation tell us? That our government is conning us completely. Uniparty. That Bill Clinton was secretly on... H.W. Bush's side, former CIA director, and that Democrat versus Republican division has been entirely manufactured ever since. Clinton is with Bush. Yeah. Gore is with Bush. Trump is with Hillary, and so on. When they present themselves in public, they are acting as characters that are against one, each other, uh, one another, practicing kayfabe, as wrestlers do. Again, shout out to our what friend is, Angel in the kayfabe? afternoon. What's the... Kayfabe is, is like the, fake, the kayfabe? it's the fake fighting within wrestling. It's the 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 false bravado okay. and the I'm gonna get them and blah, 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 when they go back behind the scenes into the locker room and they all hang out together. Yeah. It's it's the illusion that yeah. they're that they're fighting each other. 
As it turns out, we have a secret kleptocracy. Both parties are run by financial criminals whose only goals are to divide, deceive, deceive, and bleed us dry. Wow. Mm. Thought he knew the difference from the red from the blue, but they both bleed us so dry. I know those words from somewhere. A song called Red Pill by Jesse Jett. They divide the public the against it. so lie, and they spell disaster for you. Uh, well, kayfabe, exactly. They divide, yeah. the, they divide the public against itself and blame the other party while everything gets worse and more expensive and only a handful of people take all the money. And I said to you when I read this last night, for the first time, I said, oh my God, he's saying basically what I've been saying, which is red versus blue while they all run away with the green. We're all distracted. Don't fall for it. Yeah. He says, one of the key findings of this research is that Harvard University is one of the largest organized crime fronts in history. Skull and bones. What? Also, Yale University is in on this, too. He didn't catch that, which is how they churn yeah. out billionaires. It's a major hub of this sprawling criminal network. As it turns out, dozens of the writers of The Simpsons went to Harvard. Wait, what? Yeah. Mm. You know how Simpsons seems to always... You know how Simpsons always seems to, like, know what's happening years before it happens? He says, so I asked myself the question, if The Simpsons served the interests of organized crime, how would it do so? Well... It offers a dysfunctional family suffering from moral decay, a community incapable of solving its problems, a worker drone who slaves away for an evil billionaire, and cathartic laughs for our poor collective circumstances. There are some notable specifics. Look at how they massacred my boy. <laughs> Marge Corleone. Before, and I'll say it again. That was Marge Corleone, by the way. Oh. Democracy simply doesn't work. Yes, that was Marge Corleone. Look how they massacred my boy. Yeah. Holy shit, that's great. There are some notable specifics as yeah. it relates to this research, too. Yes, he's actually going to list Simpsons episodes and how they link to all of this. In Marge versus the Monorail, the town... <laughs> I'm in danger! Yes, the townsfolk are too oafish and invested to invest in the town's needs or fix Main Street and fall for the charms of a dazzling showman with a bogus monorail Ponzi scheme. SPF. Yeah, I when we know When we know that the show is closely linked to an organization that invests billions of dollars in Ponzi factories, this becomes quite damning. In Lisa the Iconoclast, Lisa discovers that the town founder, Jebediah Springfield, was a serious secret criminal con artist, and that the town f- townsfolk's lives are a lie. Israel, anyone? Realizing that this is an important discovery, she desperately tries to get the townsfolk to listen to her, but they meet her with hostility, apathy, disbelief, partisanship, and she fails to get through to them. Julian Assange, anyone? Ultimately, she realizes the town is so far gone that perhaps it's just better to let them be lied to by con artists and she keeps the secret to herself. And here I've been... Yes, thank you, Homer. And here I've been, like Lisa Simpson, desperately trying to get friends, family, and the public to believe the proof of a totalitarian con I'm trying to show them, and they've turned away with hostility, apathy, disbelief, and partisanship. Very often, people in my life tell me that I need to drink a decaf once in a while. So I feel a lot of this. And so we realize the criminal truth of The Simpsons. Our elites are telling us that our eroding collective circumstances are our own fault. And we can't do anything about it while they steal the American dream from us. It is, for lack of a more elegant word, brainwashing. Or predictive programming is what I like to call it. Lastly... We string these major discoveries together. (laughs) Cryptocurrency is an economic doomsday device. Our government is a secret kleptocracy. The Simpsons exists to brainwash us. From there, the only research we need is critical thinking, and we're able to piece together the true story of our circumstances. Consider America since 1988. Institutions like healthcare and universities have become parasitic in their skyrocketing prices. News media tells us to be angry and trivialized, tribalized, not trivialized, tribalized. 
Daytime television warns us of moral decay. Ooh. Local news tells us to fear our neighbors. The Simpsons tells us we're too oafish and divided to save the American dream. Seinfeld tells us to celebrate the assholes and be irritated by all the normal people around us. Reality TV tells us that life is real life is filled with hedonism and strife and that everybody can be and is famous. I'm adding. There's anything wrong with that. Social media owned by crypto criminals like Mark Zuckerberg and Elmo Musk is flooded with nonsense conspiracy theories and memes reminding us that we're hopeless, helpless, anxious, depressed, iconic, ironic, scared, apathetic, escapist, lonely, misguided, and jaded, telling us we can't do anything but have a laugh at our circumstances. On top of the fact that I would say that federal voting, add right add that right in there, like writing a letter to Santa. All right. Liberals mock the hypocrisy of conservatives. Conservatives mock the hypocrisy of liberals and our collective circumstances erode. Again, red versus blue while they run away with the green. The left shouts all cops are bastards, which ensures they'll be hated by the police and public and flies in the face of leftist theory. Disagree. The public's distrust of the government. Yeah. He says that... uh, Okay. That Yes, that hating the cops flies in the face of leftist theory. Okay. Uh, the public's, that's a little dumb, but okay. The public's distrust of government is at an all-time high, but so is the belief that we're helpless to do anything about it. And with all this, sharp rise, a sharp rise in apocalyptic messaging. Climate change will kill us all. COVID will kill us all. Vaccines will kill us all. AI will kill us all. No matter the bubbles we ascribe to, we're bombarded with existential crises with no solutions. We've seen a surge in in apocalyptic film. God, say that five times fast. Don't. Literature. Apocalyptic film. Apocalyptic film. Yep. Literature and and video games. I'd have to set that as a stream deck button. Then you Mm -hmm. can do it. Right? Cheat. All right. So we've seen a surge in apocalyptic film, literature, and video games that tell us there's no way out of our poor circumstances but societal breakdown. (laughs) Zombies tell us that... What's that new Fallout TV show? Zombies tell us that the public is our enemy. If you go to your nearest convenience store, you could buy a can of water called Liquid Death. Okay, but that's... He says this is our rotten farce. He's saying that even as innocuous as something to drink, you're being hit. This is our rotten farce. For our entire lives, we've been flooded with media designed to slowly steer us into a world where the American dream was dead, where the public was fully divided against itself, where everybody believed we were powerless to do anything about our work circumstances. You should listen to Jesse Jett, or at least he should have. It's also they can organize an unprecedented apocalyptic rug pull on the entire populace as they pivot to fascism which is perhaps best understood as kleptocracy at the barrel of a gun. When we piece it all together, we understand the truth. We are in a totalitarian doomsday cult. Why on earth would our elites do this? There are so many reasons, but the simplest is because capitalism is unsustainable and they know it. Climate change and resource extraction would catch up eventually. I was told my entire life, that the resources of the earth were finite, that they may not run out in my lifetime, but that eventually they would run out, that the the planet would eventually drain itself of oil. They would no longer be discovering deposits of natural gas. We've got to figure our way out of this without drilling. Things escalated wildly in 1988. Things escalated wildly in 1988 when former CIA director George H.W. Bush got the White House. But this plan had long been in action prior. Why is Stanley Kubrick's comedy about mutually assured destruction called Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb? Because he was a cocky secret fascist who was getting us to stop worrying and love the bomb. Why did he make a clockwork orange? So we'd rejoice at ultraviolence designed to desensitize us to the horrors of the world. Why were the Manson family murders? Crawling with cover-ups and intelligence agents. 
because our government wanted to make us fear for our lives and believe that hippies are deranged psychopaths. As still portrayed by Eric Cartman, by the way, in South Park. And it makes me fucking cringe every time they do that. Mm. Why did Walt Disney produce a fraudulent documentary that told us that lemmings follow each other off of cliffs so we would believe it? Why did the Beatles tell us to fear the tax man and to scoff at revolution, chase nonsense conspiracy theories, and that happiness is a warm gun so we would believe it? Why did Easy Rider tell us the hippie movement was dead so we would believe it, actually, so we would know it? <laughs> Why did Chinatown end with defeatism in the face of massive corruption so we would believe that? Why did George Orwell tell us of a hellish future of totalitarian control that we are powerless to stop, Ink Sock, so we would believe it? Why did Wall Street tell us greed, for lack of a better word, is good, so we would believe it? Why did Do the Right Thing tell us we're all racially tribalized? And then he made Jungle Fever on top of it. So we would believe it. Yeah. Why did Simpsons creator Matt Groening make a comic strip called Life in Hell? So we would believe it. On and on and on and on and on. When it comes to any popular media, if you ask yourself the question, why would secret doomsday cult kleptocrats want the public to consume this? You'll find your answers. He's saying to reverse engineer it. Sadly, and again, we're almost done. I, I, I got some things to say. I know you do too. This is obviously very bad news, yeah. but the biggest lie we've been told is that we're powerless. As Anna says, we're not powerless. Not at all. We are the many the psychopaths of the few. Yes. We've got, our, we've got one way out of hell world, and that's for the public to realize that we've been conned completely so we can build a united movement that shatters every lie they've told us mocks this rotten farce as loudly as, de as it deserves, and aims at nothing short of abolishing our criminal government so we can build one that serves the public. God, that sounds awfully familiar. To yep. understand this story is to see right through the con, to become immune to the endless sea of criminal propaganda, and to feel the great joy and power that comes with freedom. I also see it almost as being unplugged from the matrix and being able to see that everybody else is plugged in. If a small number of people put on these truth colored glasses, we're in for an unimaginably bright future. If not, we get an apocalypse. For more information, I put together this booklet that includes major findings and a map to a sea of proof, along with all the other essays on this site for the true history of America since the end of World War II. See here. And to see this discovery unfold in real time, along with further explanations, hundreds of pieces of evidence not covered here, advice, inspiration, political theory, and the heart and soul of a man escaping history's largest doomsday cult, see his Instagram story highlights. He says, I apologize for leaving things so scattered, but this has been an exhausting affair. So long as you understand this true ideology, you will be able to learn the whole story. <clears throat> He says, here's a federal lawsuit that I filed against dozens of perpetrators of the cryptocurrency Ponzi, not for litigation, but just to preserve the information and attach my name to it. I was terrified and hadn't slept in days and it shows, but it served its purpose of keeping myself alive long enough to keep learning and telling this story. I no longer have my original research files from the crypto rabbit hole. If you want to see them, you'll have to get my laptop back from the government. Ask them how they got it. It's a very fun story. I hope you know how powerful you are. I wish you a hell of a lot more than luck. Um, and of course, they've turned off commenting for the post, too. So. Yeah. I want to point out a couple other things. But I'll let you have, have something to say here. Because you've got some things to say about this, some feelings. Uh, my my bullshit detector goes off with this story. I don't know why. You know, a couple of reasons. I think we've we've both kind of tried to look at. You know, well, I mean, this dude was what connected to the Democrats at least twice for a four month period each time. And who was he working for? Well, and, as it turns out, 
Um, he had worked for a couple. He had worked for a couple of campaigns for Democratic seats. Now, uh, he was mostly a solutions engineer or a tech guy for quite a yep. while. But back in 2014, he ran as the operations director for four months as Barra for Congress, where he mostly organized public events for donors and volunteers. Interesting. Right? Yeah. As well as the operations now, director. That's his, yes. You have his LinkedIn up, right? Yes. Is that way you're pulling? Yes. Go to the top of that. Yes. You want to see, you want, you want to show who his, his profile picture is with. Profile picture is. You know yeah. that guy? Anybody know that guy? Yeah, old. I, I did not help this crypto gentleman. So, so that's a little weird. This site rules so hard. Yeah. I mean, because, especially if he's going to talk shit about him in the article we read a minute ago, where he's like filing stuff against them. You know. So, but still has that guy in his profile picture. It's weird. On top of the fact, and you pointed this out of, as well. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, that like we've heard a lot of this from people we know, right? Who were probably the only people talking about a lot of the crypto problems and stuff like that. It's blockchain. It's no, an unlimited hangout. No mention of them. No mention of them. Gray zone. Like no mention of anything other than like the two sources in this were what Wikipedia and, and the Washington Post. That's what he had linked to. And the WAPO. Which was also so, a little a little question, a little concerning, which was of all the things yeah. that he that he linked to, and notice he didn't link to very much in this article. Here's the 88 DNC speech. Right. Here's a WAPO article about the Roblo operation, a WAPO article about Kitty Dukakis, yeah. a Wikipedia description of what Kfabe is. Of all sites. Now wait yeah. a minute. You know that there's a global cabal going on, and you're linking and referencing to Wikipedia, which you know is controlled by the intelligence community? Okay, that's I mean, I, I get using it occasionally for something, but, like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, like, there's that. Even there's the descriptions of the Simpsons episodes. Where he did it. Or, or Wikipedia right, where, references. Where he not did IMDb it. or not the simpsons or anywhere else wikipedia weird yeah. okay the lack of mentioning any of his sources and where he gets any of this information from now he claims that he's doc documented it in other posts on this substack but again more crawling manson family murders from wikipedia intelligence agents yes well there's a weird but thing about the cops in here too that I didn't notice that till today. Right. That, that leftists should leftists should get along with cops. Yeah, not 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 in my experience. Right? Yeah. But every link here is to either Wikipedia or Washington Post until he gets to his booklet, which is the other major findings and a map to a sea of proof. And I did not go through all yeah. of this, to be honest with you. I didn't. Um Sure. I need to. I would like to, but that that's for another for another time. But yeah, something something plus stinks the government here. already had this this guy's laptop. Yeah, something sneaks. I don't know what it is yet. There's a couple of things, but right. But here he's saying, yeah, I'm... nine months ago, the odds of a random person on Earth becoming a billionaire is about one in three million. The odds of a Stanford University becoming a billionaire is about one in two thousand. Want to know why? Learn the basics of Ponzi schemes. Understand why fanatical futurist technology makes for good ones. Think Theranos, which was founded at Stanford. Go to startx.com. Well, the Ponzi company. scheme thing, while not entirely wrong, it seems a little vague and not accurate. Like, yeah, some of this is Ponzi esque, but not everything. Sometimes it's just capitalism, you know, that is causing these problems. 
The supervillains so, are about to collapse the economy. Thank the super crypt, the, the crypto super Ponzi for that one. Lucky for us, that's as real as cryptocurrency. We just had to realize it. <clears throat> and I believe he's talking probably about the failure yeah. of SVB, uh, of, um, of FTX in this case. Yeah. So, wow. Um, again, he's got. He goes deep in this Ponzi papers. Dot Substack. Dot com. Uh, another reason why the government might want to be coming after platforms like this, which is where people can publish things like this. And this was published in October of last year about Peter Thiel. And we've looked yeah. into Peter Thiel before. PayPal Mafia met with Epstein in 2014, mm -hmm. huge proponent of crypto. I did not know that he that he was gay, but his romantic partner, Jeff Thomas, fell to his death shortly after the SVB bank run. Did we know that? Sure. All right. Um, what is crypto? I, I think you might have mentioned it. But... Big Ponzi players and who were involved with that. All right. There's the speech. Everything he talked about was really here. All right. A false flag attack gets blamed on our enemies, likely Russia or China. Since many Silicon Valley companies will collapse, it might include a power grid attack or an internet outage. Like we said, power goes out. What happens to your crypto? Mm -hmm. QAnon, pizza yeah, game I mean, are examples of this nonsense to hide the fact that main characters are financial criminals. All right, there's talking about Stanford, NYU, UNC, all the different places where intelligence, I'm surprised he didn't list University of Miami there too. Follow billionaires and bullshit science for more. Yale as well. There's a lot of parts to this. I'll bet you Rice University, which is the Harvard of the Midwest, is also involved. Well, no right. talks about no talks about Israel. Doesn't mention Bushnell. Right. Like Right. This guy just self immolated. He didn't even mention a guy who self immolated weeks ago. Right. With lots of press involved around it. You know. And not a, not just didn't mention that guy. Didn't mention any of the times anyone has ever chosen to do that before. Or why he like, chose that as his right. form of expression. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 um, I'm curious to hear what other people have to say about that. I know that there are people who are horrified yeah. by it. Uh, I heard, I read somebody in there said too that paranoid even or that do dissidents had dismissed it as kind of kooky. Um, isn't Matt Groening a Freemason? Sure. That's a good question, gamer. Um, Possibly. They said that he was a kook. I, I saw someone said that somewhere. I thought my tin hat was expansive. Um, tell me what he said that was really outrageous. He talked about the Great Reset. He talked. He didn't really talk. Now, that's the other thing. He didn't mention any of the organizations other he than the people. He talked around a lot of it. Right. right. He didn't like, talk about the World Economic Forum. He didn't talk about the Council on Foreign Relations. He didn't talk about the Bilderberg Group. Yeah. All right. He only talked about several some people, but it's it's really interesting. There it is. His sources. Yes, cookies. Wh who are his sources? If you have, <laughs> well, we've had plenty of longies. But if you have not already, and you are of a means and able to, and are getting value here, we do this on a volunteer basis and on a user funded basis. So whatever you can do to help us, there are some ways to support monthly subscriptions on Patreon, Substack, one-time donations on rumble cash app. And then we're going to put up a QR code, which already is up or was up. Uh, and here, there we go. That's for Jesse's computer fund. Probably Mac hooked us up on Friday night on the Jesse stream. And uh, 
And we're at 47% right now. We're almost halfway to our $1,000 goal to help Jesse there. Uh, we'll get to Jesse coming to New York City. I know we talked about that last week. So...